Welcome to my Facebook and uh, welcome. It is Monday night about 6.30. Every time I plan a time, I'm always running late. So welcome to my Facebook. Please come in and share this video with whoever that you feel needs to see what I'm going to talk about because what I'm going to talk about is the biggest issue around the world. And hey Ryan, you guys are jumping on, so I'm just gonna wait for some of you guys to jump on. And uh, this is a very serious, hey Jacob, uh, this is a very serious topic and uh, it takes a lot of courage for me to come out and talk about this, but what good does it do if I just sing the national anthem and I sing Christian music? What good does it do? This world doesn't need another singer. This world needs somebody that will tell you the truth and be transparent and help someone that needs desperate help out of darkness. I mean, what good does it do if I'm on stage and I'm on television? We don't need someone else for another personality out there. God is just speaking that to me. People need the truth. They need to know that this person behind the makeup and the hair and the gowns and the talent or the singing or whatever you call it has got a story has got a testimony behind where God has brought me from from the gutter to the uttermost I mean the books I've written the CDs the music the government uh, that I sing for the presidential campaign all these things uh, and being on television around the world, it just didn't come as just happened by chance. It came because God delivered me from the powers of darkness and translated me into the kingdom of his dear son. And I want this video to give you hope and I want to pour out myself before the Lord as an offering for you so that you can be set free from the hand of Satan. And if God can do it for me, he can surely do it for you. So this is why I'm doing these videos, these new type of videos of being transparent. I'm doing it because I want to be transparent and honest with you. And I want you to see that God can take you from the darkest, darkest parts of your life and he can set you free and you can be free in Jesus name. And I'm going to go through the history, please share this video of how I was introduced to pornography and how, where it took me into and how God set me free. This is the biggest issue in churches and around the world and among pastors and women and men. And I mean, it is a huge issue here. This video is not about condemnation. This video is about the power of God. This video is about the truth. You know, because there's so many people bound up by pornography. There's so many people that don't know how to get set free. Some people don't care and others are just under guilt and condemnation and uh, uh, just all kinds of judgment. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you with this. I, I believe God is going to use this to help you to be set free. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So I came to America when I was a little girl, almost five years old. And I was raised by my grandparents who were very beautiful people, even though they were from another religion. Uh, my grandpa was the sweetest man alive, just the sweetest man. He was a Sikh, which is half Hindu, half Islam. And he just loved me so much and I loved him so much. And within 24 hour notice, I got a visa to come to the United States. Me and my older brother, we got a visa. We didn't even know that we were going to be shipped out. We didn't even have a chance to mourn the loss or to say goodbye. So here we are, shipped on a plane. We go to Germany first, and then we come to America. And I was about seven and eight years old, nine years old. Magazines started coming into my household. My older brother found magazines, just like a lot of children found magazines in alleys, in garbages, and they would bring them into their home and hide them. I mean, how many people started out this way? 
you bring a magazine, please share this video. You bring a magazine from the alley, from your friends in the basement, and you would hide them in the basement in between your bed, in between the mattresses. You would hide the magazines under your bed, wherever you could. And you would start looking at the magazines because that's what kids did. And they knew it was wrong. That's why when we hide things, we know it's wrong. And so I would search for these magazines because I was curious. I'm like, I want to see what's in these magazines. So I would go and I would find those magazines in between my brother's couches and or in between the mattresses in his bed. And I would start looking at him as a little girl, eight, seven, eight, nine years old. I would begin to look at these little, these mag, these dirty magazines, Playboy and Hustler and all those magazines that were hiding in my brother's mattress. I would go in there because I knew it was wrong, but I was curious, like, what is he looking at? I want to look at that. And I, and I would open the pages of these magazines and these images would pop into my head. These images would just start going into my head at seven, eight, nine years old, a little girl, because I grew up around brothers. And that's what little kids did. They found magazines and they'd hide them. You know I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. I think 100% people have seen some sort of dirty picture in our world. 100% of you have seen something. And if you didn't, you're lying. I don't believe it. Everything's got dirty, dirty on it, okay? So I would begin to look at these little these magazines as a little girl, such a sweet, innocent little girl. And so these images would pop up in my mind and I would be like, what are these? And is this what people do when they're naked? And, you know, when you're indoctrinated that way as a little child, you think that this is how a woman should be because these are the images that you're seeing. You're seeing a woman using her body as an object to please men. That's what you're raised believing because not from parents, but from society. That's what a little girl is brought up believing and little boys. When they look at those magazines, they see these images and they want to play them out. They want to, they want to show, they want to do what they see and they fantasize. Oh, the naked mannequin. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. This is my, this is my mannequin from Macy's. Oh my gosh. How crazy. Like in the middle of this very topic. Oh, I'm changing. That's for my Poshmark business. My online used clothing business. <laughs> oh, you guys cracked me up. Oh my gosh. That is funny though. I mean, Ty, Elizabeth, man, girl, you are on time. You, I try to hide it, but it wouldn't hide. Okay, so let me go on. I forgot. Okay, so let me go on. So my uncle had them. One of my uncles, not. Let me just, you have a disclaimer. One of my uncles from Canada <laughs> had... Dirty magazines, when I would go spend the weekends at his house with my cousins, he had dirty magazines underneath his couch. We'd find them as little kids. And we knew that they were there. And I'd look at them and I, I, I would hide, put them back. So as a little girl, I was indoctrinated with looking at these images. Because remember, I wasn't raised as a Christian. I was raised in the world, right? He was very, very abusive to his wife, my aunt who died of breast cancer. He was very abusive to her, and of course he would be. He, he kept looking at women as objects, right? So when I was a little girl, I was about eight years old. I was somewhere between eight and nine, just in that arena. I don't know the exact age, but I had a demon spirit that manifested to me while I'm sleeping on the couch. I was laying on the couch. I was a little girl. I was laying on the couch and I felt this spirit touch me. And this spirit touched me on my body. It was such a sexual touch. It felt like 
it wanted to have sex with me and I I realized what it was after I got saved. It was an incubus spirit. It's a demon spirit that visits people. The incubus visits the women and the succubus visits the men and tries to have sex with them. These are demons. These are real demons that come from my country, India. I'm 100% Indian. I, I, that's, I'm 100%. There's no mixture. I'm like purebred. I might have other things in me from India, but... So, as I was growing up in my teenage years, and please, y'all, we are grown people, and the church does not talk about this. So, please listen to me. I would learn to masturbate with these magazines, okay, as a little girl, all the way through my teenage years into adult life. I, or videos. They started making videos, so I didn't know it was sin. I didn't, but I would hide it because in my conscience, the law of God was written on, on my heart already. I that's how I knew that it was sin and it was evil. And I would take these magazines and I would I would hide them and I would I would buy them and I'd start hiding them and I would begin to fantasize. And every time, and it was really weird because let me tell you something. When you, I have never been a stripper in my life. Never even been in a strip club. Except one time, I had a neighbor looking for her boyfriend. I walked in a strip club and walked right back out. I have never been in a strip club in my life otherwise. Never. Never sat in one. Never stayed in one. I never had an encounter with another woman. Never kissed another woman. Never had a lesbian uh, 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 encounter. Although women have, have tried to pursue me. Uh, God put something in me, even as a non-Christian, that I knew it was unnatural. Like, I knew it was. And God protected me. But, but, let's talk. These magazines, they open you up to fantasizing about other women and other men. Even as a man, when you're looking at a man, it's a homosexual tendency there because you're watching men and women together so you're turned on by that man as well as the woman so you're looking and you're fantasizing and you are that is a homosexual spirit that is being released to you just like for women looking at other women with men that is a lesbian spirit that is being released to you and indoctrinated to you through pornography i'm talking from my heart you guys i'm really talking from my heart because this is what happened to me okay I, how can I help you if I can't be honest? How can I help you when you see me singing on stages and all over on TV and doing all this stuff? How can I help you if I'm not honest about this stuff, okay? So, this brings a, 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 a spirit of perversion into your life. And then you see orgies in these magazines and you see and videos. So as I was growing up, I was fantasizing as you, you masturbate and as you do these sexual things to yourself, which is a form of idolatry, but as you do these things and masturbate and look at pornography, you are fantasizing about men and women together and men uh, doing things to women and women to men and you're seeing all their naked body parts and that is a form of homosexuality and lesbianism. So... These images do imprint in your mind because visually everything that you look at starts begins to imprint in your mind and you begin to fantasize uh, when you're with another partner or whoever you're having sex with and you begin to uh, be disconnected emotionally and you're unable to be intimate or have intimacy with another human being because you are infiltrating your psyche, your conscience your soul with images that are on video, on your telephone, on your magazines, on whatever it is that you're watching, it's very easily accessible. And you're visualizing things that are in being imprinted in your mind permanently. Permanently. Because these are visual images. And so you fantasize with your significant other, with your wife, with your husband, whoever it is, because you cannot perform without being turned on by perversion. And that's what happens when you look at pornography. 
And so that's what happened to me. And when you look at pornography, things get darker and darker and darker and darker. The simple pornography didn't turn you on, so you go darker and you get deeper into it. And then as I began to grow up and through my teenage years, I began to have immoral sex, sex outside of marriage. And I looked at myself, I remembered all the images that I saw, and I would, I would dress, I would act it out with a guy that I was dating. And that's how I lost my virginity, and that's how I began to date guys in high school and, and out of high school and, and in my early adult life. I would begin to act out the images that I would see in the pornography that I would watch. So I would think this is what turns them on, and I didn't know any better because I'm a sinner. I, 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 I was in the world. I didn't know any better. And, and, but I knew it was wrong because... We hide things. We keep them in the closet. Anytime we hide things, even as unbelievers, even unbelievers know things are wrong because the law of God is written on their hearts. So God says, their law, I will write it, or my law, I will write on their hearts. So, so as I was growing up, that's what I did. I had illicit relationships with men. And when they wanted me sexually and they wanted me physically, it was a form of love. So I thought it was love because I thought, man, they really want me. That means I'm valuable in their sight, but that's how the world twists my mind. It twisted me. It twisted me to the point that I thought, man, if I look good and hot and I showed all my legs, I mean, I would go to the nightclubs and I would have like nothing on, dresses all the way up to my crotch. I'd have, have my body sticking out, like everything's showing. That's what I would do because that's what the world does. I mean... Even to this day, that's what the world does. They bump and grind on the dance floor and they, they dress provocatively. I mean, I went with an evangelist friend of mine, uh, Randy, when he came up to Michigan. We went to um, Windsor, Ontario because I, I live like 20 minutes from the border and all these girls had their dresses up to their crotch. I mean, it was, I mean, all you saw was legs and if they bent over, that, it just, it just showed everything and and so men they think this is what women want because men are looking at pornography as well as women women are addicted to just as men and they see women as, as an object and I'm gonna get a little bit more into it uh, please share this video because this is very very needed <coughs> excuse me so that's why I would have sex outside of marriage and I would want to portray what I saw in the magazines and the videos I mean because that's what the world teaches us women, that we are objectified and that we that's what men want. They, they want sex, they want sex, they want sex. That's all they want. And a woman is just an object to be used, like a trophy and uh, naked. And if we don't look that way and we don't dress that way and act that way, then we're worthless. So we are indoctrinated from the beginning by Satan himself. Because he is the prince of this world and the prince of the power of the air and he's full of perversion and he loves to use God's, uh, God's creation to pervert what is holy and what God has intended for his glory. So when I, so okay, so let's get to my first marriage. I was, um, I found a guy who was significantly, significantly older than me, very much older than me by decades. So. He was my boss. He was heavy into pornography. We started doing videos together. We started watching pornography together. We, we, we even ended up getting married after I got saved. But before then, we did videos together. We, we put things on and, and I would watch it with him. We'd watch it together. And I just remember how empty I was. Like how I always felt like, well, maybe this is what they do. This is what the world does. So I got to do it because this is normal. Because when you're in the world, you think this is all normal. And so that's what we did. That's what we did. And, you know, it was a spirit of lust. It was a spirit of lust on us. It was fantasy. It was fantasizing about men. It was fantasizing about women. Like I said, homosexuality, lesbianism. It's even a form of pedophilia or pedophiles because a lot of these girls that are in this, in this are human sex trafficked. And they are slaves they are young they're 10 11 12 years old that look like they have male bodies and female bodies i mean they're grown when you see these kids in school they're they got like they're developed now because i believe 
the hormones and all the meats and the foods that we eat, they're fully developed and you're watching on your on your on your phone. You're watching little girls and little boys that are and you you become a pedophile when they're 10, 11, 12, 13 years old and you become a pedophile. You, you, I mean, because you don't even realize you're watching these young little kids that can be your daughter or your sister or your brother, you know, I mean, little babies that you're watching and they dress them up to look like they're grown and here you are masturbating with them in the privacy of your home, your car, the bathroom, I don't care, at work and you, you are perverted, you've become perverted in your mind because you become des desensitized to what is evil. You no longer see it as evil because you have allowed it for so long, even in the church. So masturbation is worship of self. So when you start worshiping yourself with these idolatrous images and thoughts in your mind and you're looking on your computer while you're at home during quarantining or out of work or at work and you've got the privacy of your computer at work, uh, or your phone, or in your car, wherever you're at, you are masturbating. It's, a, it's idolatry. It's, it's satisfying your body and looking at your body as a temple of idolatry, that you have to do whatever it is to satisfy yourself. It's the pleasures of this life, the pleasures of self, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. It is the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh. You've got to satisfy that flesh. And so you start fantasizing in your mind. You start having images, the same images that you've seen in your mind and, and that pornography. You start masturbating to it. You, you begin to bring your husband, your wife, your, your spouse or your girlfriend or whatever form of pornea, fornication. Pornea is, is Greek. For fornication, fornicating, sex, immorality outside of the covenant of marriage. The Bible says to the pure, all things are pure, but to the unbelieving and defiled, nothing is pure. Even their consciences are defiled. So let's read some scriptures where God really talks about this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna end with this. So I want you guys to say uh, share this video. So when you begin to when you begin to have images and you know, um, I have a, I have, I have a friend. They had a, uh, uh, her husband had a, uh, a swinging affair in their church with another couple in the choir for 20 years. They were in ministry, and uh, that her husband slept with that couple for years, and that couple is still in ministry. And these people have a form of godliness, but they deny the power that can change them, and they're all over in our churches. They're all over in our churches. They're all over in our churches in ministry as swingers, pastors, 70 to 80% of pastors look at pornography. So this is what God is doing in the end times. People are becoming so desynthesized and that's what happened to me. I mean, here I am making videos with my ex and doing all this stuff with my with my ex-husband and thinking nothing of it until the day I got saved. So the day I got saved, God said, destroy everything. <laughs> I mean, it was like, I would say probably days, days, maybe a week or two. He said, destroy everything. All your videos, all your magazines have... According to Acts 19.19, 19, gather everything together that has bring, brought defilement to you. Nobody had to tell me pornography was sin. I knew when I got saved that it was evil. I knew it because it was adultery. And the Bible says the, that very thing that it is adultery. And I'm going to read it to you. And first, first thing I'm going to say is... <laughs> I'll get to it. It's gonna get good here. I'll get to it in a minute. All right, just give me a just give me a minute here. Just give me a minute here. Oh my gosh. Please help me find these verses here. Matthew 5 28. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman to lust after her with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. 
So I knew, man, I was living with the guy. We we're looking at porn, making videos, doing all this stuff. Time to repent. I got saved. I got to marry this guy and I got to repent. So we gathered everything together. Okay. We gathered everything together and we burned it according to Acts 19, 19. We had a bonfire. The tapes were burned. Everything was burned. I was afraid he'd keep something and then mess, mess with me in the future. But thank God, God did not allow that. So that's what I did. I had to renounce Satan's kingdom while I prayed and burned every video, every magazine, everything and renounce Satan's kingdom. That's what I had to do because I knew that God disapproved of it. Then here I am, I'm married to this guy and he gets supposedly saved and he gets demonic tongues. He starts speaking in demonic tongues. Then there's paranormal activity and going on in my house. Thank God. And he started, of course, physically hurting me and abusing me. And God delivered me in my last video. I shared that. I'm going to share with you his Facebook as of today. He's significantly older than me. God has allowed him to live. This is his Facebook. I'm, I'm going to read to you something. This is how perverted this man was. He calls himself a customer harassment specialist at Dollywood. Fruit picker at Garden of Eden. Listen, you guys, this is what I married. Because I had, I was an object. This pornography did this to me. This is what I married. Please share this video. Former entry level button pusher at Intercourse Canning Company. This guy is so perverse. Old and perverse. Former gore technician at the Haunted Hotel. Studies how not to take crap off of so sociopaths at Crapsville. This guy's a sociopath. And he doesn't even realize it. Studied how to, how to study at, and I'm not going to say the word because it's too vile. Lives in Intercourse, Pennsylvania. This is the man. <laughs> this is right here. I don't know if it's backwards. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is so demonic, you guys. I married a guy like that. I married a guy like that. I married him. The first one. I married him. And you know what? Still perverse and old. Still perverse. What a, sh what a shameful thing for me. I mean, I am so... Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. So, <laughs> after, after that, I got in ministry after, after my second marriage and the guy abused me. I was chased my whole life, my whole Christian walk, by ungodly pastors and evangelists that are married and unmarried. And I know they look at porn because they are not, they are not faithful to their wives. They're not even faithful to God. These pastors, so many people are into porn in church. Forget outside of church. Outside of church is free for all. We're not going to where the sinners are because it's a free for all out there. You don't believe it? Get saved. Get saved. Come out of darkness into the light. Listen, saints, when you sit and you look at porn, it darkens your mind. It's like a demonic stronghold. The demons come in. And literally infiltrate your atmosphere. So while you're watching porn, imagine all the demons coming around you. They have surrounded you. And they are putting strongholds in your mind. These are fortresses. They begin to take over. You no longer can discern good and evil. You are in sin against a holy and righteous God. You have separated yourself from God. You cannot... Continue in sin and make it to heaven. What does the Bible say? Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Let's read it. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, Halloween, enmity, strife, fighting, jealousy, fits of anger. All you guys that go off when you're angry. 
revelries, dissensions, divisions, envies, drunkenness, orgies. Orgies is included in the Bible. God said orgies and things like these. That means things like orgies, things like sexual immorality, things like impurity, things like sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, things like these things. I have warned you as I warned you before. Those that do such things will not, will not, will not, will not, will not inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> Sorry, my singing comes in. You will not, you will not go to heaven. It's not a funny thing. You will not go to heaven. It's serious. So let me continue. So these men, and so as I'm in ministry and I'm in public ministry, People are accusing me of being a stripper. And I'm like, how do you know I'm a, I look like a stripper? How do you, how do you know? Because I love to do my hair, makeup. I've been a professional makeup artist. I worked for Christian Dior. I love makeup. I love hair. I had my own salon business. I mean, how do you know I look like a stripper? How do you know I look like somebody in some magazine? What are you looking at? You have become defiled because when you look at me, you can't think pure thoughts. That's not my fault. I dress appropriately. I look appropriate. Listen. To the pure, all things are pure. What are you looking at, y'all? Men and women. Women are so bitter. Men are so defiled. They defile women. Okay. So, men are having groups in church right now for pornography addiction. I'm going to help you all. I'm going to help you all. I had a pastor call me about a year, year and a half ago. He was interested in me. And I, I, asked, I asked the same question. Do you have an issue with pornography? Well, all men are weak. Really? Does that include women too? Well, you don't understand. Really? Did God, did God just speak to men or women? I mean, <laughs> well, I look at it like three to four times, like every three to four days, he said. I, I, I said, you're a pastor. He says, yeah, but I repent every time I look at it. I said, how many years have you been looking at pornography? And he said, over 20 years. What? Over 20 years. Looking looking at pornography. I said, you think you're going to go to heaven? Oh, yes, mean, who do you think you are? Look at you all, Miss Perfect. Miss Perfect, no problem. I said, Miss Perfect, do you have any idea what Jesus did for me on that cross? Do you know that he was nailed to that cross and delivered me from Satan's hand? Do you know what, how dark I was? I, I couldn't say that. I couldn't even say that because he was so angry at me that I would, quote, judge him for looking at porn that I couldn't even tell him, wait a minute, God delivered me from it and I saw it for what it was. It was dark and evil and I, and I was so grateful for my salvation that I couldn't even... I couldn't even tell him that because he was so angry that I would judge him because he's a man looking at porn. Let me tell you, you if you're listening to me, you're, you're not going to heaven unless you repented by now. So, unless you see it as God sees it, like I saw it as God sees it. I saw it as evil. I saw it as demoralizing. I saw that it objectifies women that it... It objectifies your sister, your mother, your daughter. When you see it as evil as God sees it, I was, that's how I saw it. I saw it as evil as God gave me his eyes. He gave me his eyes. No longer the eyes of the flesh, but the eyes of the spirit. He gave me his eyes and I was able to see things the way he sees it. He lifted the blinders off my mind. And if there's blinders on your mind, that means you're probably back, you're definitely, not probably, let me take that back. You are backslidden. When you are backslidden, you can't see anything. That means you're no longer walking with God. That's what backsliders do. They go backwards. 
like backsliding Israel, they go backwards, okay? So did you know that all the serial killers all looked at pornography? All of them. They admitted to it that they looked at pornography. They objectified women. So that's what happens. Not only did I feel like an object, and I thought I was an object, but also the men saw me as an object that looked at porn. It was normal in the world, but when you get saved, you got to see this porn as God, see, as God sees it. Because every time, listen, when you look at porn, something happens in your body. Okay? Unless you have no sexual drive. If you're a eunuch, if you have no sexual drive, please share this video. When you look, listen, listen. Last night, I was watching something on TV. It's about repentance, but let, I'll get to it. I got these free movie channels that are coming in and I thought, man, I'm gonna see Footloose. Footloose, Footloose, you know, that old movie with Patrick Swayze, Footloose or whatever. They had a naked man in there. I haven't seen a naked, <laughs> I haven't seen a naked man and I can't tell you how long. I was like, what? There's a naked man in that video. This is PG. And they're cussing. Please share this video. I had to turn it off. I switched channels. I was like this. Oh, dark. I could feel darkness coming in through my TV. Darkness. Listen, I watch baby Looney Tunes. I watch Andy Griffith. I watch everything pure. I watch everything pure. I watch I Love Lucy. But not when she's in Halloween and going to a psychic and all. I turn all that off. Listen. Yeah, Kevin Bacon. Yep. Makes me hungry for bacon right now. All right, listen. <laughs> I had to turn it off because I knew God was watching me. But, see, God doesn't leave. When you go and sin, he doesn't say, oh, I'll just wait outside the door when you're done. Just let me know when you're done. See, you got Jesus in you. So you're making Jesus do the very, you're the, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and you're, and you're fantasizing with your body. You're fantasizing and Jesus is in you. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of you. So he and the angels don't go outside the door while you're doing your sin. They're watching you. They're writing it down in the, in the book. They're writing everything down. We're going to be judged for every thought. Every thought. Your thoughts worship God or they worship the devil. You can't, you can't be a partaker of Satan and God, you can't. You can't have two masters. Porn, the serial killers look at porn, all of them. It desensitizes them. I don't know how to say that word. It desensitizes them. It makes you callous to what is evil. So you allow more and more darkness in into your life, your music. It, then, then you start listening to music. Listen, when you look at porn, it does something to your body. The chemicals change because... That's what happened to me, and I'm still human. That's what happens to me. Please share this video. Your body starts doing something. You feel these chemicals release, and you get, like, turned on, like, even visually. I'm 25% of women are visual. I am one of those 25%. So when I look at something like a man looks at something, when women look at something like me that are visual, we get the same high, okay? We get the same thing happening in our body. So you tell me, if you tell me that women don't have a hard time, that's a lie because you're lying to yourself. You're justifying your own behavior. Women have a hard time too. Repentance is the key. If you don't have the fear of God, you're not going to repent. You're not going to see it as God sees it. I want you guys to be free. You see, Satan wants to kill you. He really does. He's going to kill you. He's going to kill you. He's going to. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's going to kill you. If you don't stop your sins, he's going to kill you. Pornography will kill you spiritually, emotionally, even physically. You'll act it out. You'll get AIDS. You, you'll be full of condemnation, shame, guilt. He'll kill you. Some people kill themselves. Listen, this is real stuff. He's going to kill you through pornography. You think it's he's not real? You don't think hell is real? You don't think Satan is real? You don't think his, he's, the, he's called the prince of this world. 
the prince of the power of the air, the, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, he's going to kill you. He's going to kill your marriage. He's going to kill your children. He's going to kill your family. Look what happened with King David. King David, he, had, he repented, but you know the consequences that poor man faced? His daughter, Tamar, gets raped. His son, Absalom, tries to kill him, and the list goes on. He loses everything. Do you understand the consequences of sin? Just because you're doing it in secret, it doesn't mean that it's not. you're not going to have consequences. You're going to have spiritual consequences. Listen, I'm trying to help you. I don't want to hear. Listen, if the devil's already beating you up, I don't want to beat you up anymore. But listen, there's consequences. The reason you're allowing it is you don't have the fear of the Lord. And you don't have the fear of the Lord because you're compromising. It's like a catch-22. You keep going around the same mountain for another 40 years. 11-day journey took the children of Israel 40 years. An 11-day journey. Listen, 1 Peter 2.11 Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to estate, abstain from passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Your spirit and your soul, they're, they're like this. They hate each other. The Bible says they're at war with each other. They hate each other. And when you sin and you're around somebody that sins with you, listen, this is just sin. Hebrews 13.4 let marriage be held in honor among all. And let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. What does that mean? You cannot look at porn when you're married. This is what God just said. Let marriage be held in honor among all. Let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. You know, guys, if you're looking at porn, your wife ain't going to have sex with you. And she shouldn't. Until you repent, if you ever do. This is adultery. You're, you're committing adultery in your marriage. It is the number one cause of divorce. Come on. In churches, if you're looking at porn, your wife does not want to have sex with you. It's because... She is so offended and she's so hurt by what you're doing because you are getting turned on by other women. And that, that image is in your mind. So when you're in bed with her, it's not just you in bed with her. It's you and everybody else. It's all the women you looked at are in bed with her too. That's why I tell you guys, do not marry anyone. Don't even date anyone that has not broken soul ties off their, off their lives. You know why? Because you're going into bed with everybody they slept with on a soul level. Jesus said the two will become one flesh. So if you are dating someone or marry somebody and they didn't repent of all their relationships and break the soul ties and, 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 and the, becoming one with them and repent, they, if they don't repent with, with each person before God, they're bringing them into their marriage. That's why when you sleep with somebody, if you slept with somebody 10 years ago or 20 years ago, they're going to keep calling you because they got a soul tied to you. That's why they keep calling you. And all the other women, they call all the other women or men. That's why you keep getting these midnight hour calls because the soul tie is there because when they put their seed in you, that seed is part of you the two will become one flesh <laughs> they put that seed in you and they put that seed in that person and that person and that person and jesus said shall i join myself to a harlot shall i join myself to belial like the two don't you know it's a mystery the two will become one flesh that's why i get calls from guys 20 years ago still to this day hey yasmin how are you Soul ties. That's why you get these calls in the midnight hour. That's why your exes can't move on. It's not because they love you. It's because the soul tie. You and other women too. That's why they can't forget other women that they've been with because they have not repented. So in closing, in closing, God says that in the end times, he's going to do something. He said it'll be as in the days of Lot. 
So in Romans 1, God strictly talks about the immorality is going to increase at the end times. So they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give thanks. And they began to think up foolish things of what God was like. As a result, they, their mind became dark, just like I was saying, and confused because you'll go into spiritual confusion looking at pornography. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. Instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people, birds, animals, and reptiles. God abandoned them. That means God, right now, right now, we're living in the end right now, God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. Pornography is shameful. It goes deeper and deeper. It goes into homosexuality, lesbianism, pedophilia, human sex trafficking. All these young people are used to do this stuff to draw you in. As a result, they did violent, degrading things with each other's bodies. Romans 1. God is telling the whole world this. They traded the, the, they traded the truth of God for a lie. All of you guys that think this, I shouldn't be talking about this. God talked about, it. he talked about orgies. He talked about this. So they worshiped and served the things that God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That's why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulge in sex with each other. Lesbianism. God said, God gives them over to their degrading passions, right? This is what's happening when you're watching pornography. It gives you up to degrading passions, vileness. You see lesbianism, women with women in pornography. Listen, I got delivered from it 30 years ago. That was it. God gave them over to their shameful desires. So even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulge in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, normal, normal. God said it's normal for a man to want a woman. They burned in lust for each other. God said, listen, when you're watching porn, you're watching the men and the women have sex. It's a form of homosexuality. God says, and the men, instead of, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned in lust for one another. It's lust. Lust is the issue. Lust. God says lust. It's lust. You can't have enough. Lust is never satisfied. We'll never be satisfied. The Bible says the lust is never satisfied. Men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of this sin, They suffered within themselves the penalty that they deserved. God's saying, woo, God is, you know what God just saying? You deserve it. You deserve it. Oh, God is, oh, I, I, you know what? I, I never even read it like that. I, it just hit me. God only, not only says, I'm giving you over to what you want, the perversion, the swinging, the playing around, the pornography, the lesbianism, the homosexuality, the pornea, fornication. You know, people that are not married having sex, that's sex for demons. That's pornography for demons. Demons watch you naked. Nakedness. You're, you know we're going to be clothed in white robes even in heaven? <laughs> God covers our nakedness even in heaven. Do you understand? Do you understand? So you're opening your body up to another person that's not your husband or wife. There's no spirit husband or wife. That's just garbage. It's demonic, okay? If you don't have a piece of paper and a ring on it, forget it. You ain't their spouse. You're not their spouse. But when you're having sex, that's pornography, pornea in Greek, fornication translated, Sex outside of marriage, all y'all Christians. Sex outside, I'm talking to Christians. Sex outside of marriage. You're opening your body pornography to the other person that you're not married to. You are a porn star to that person you are not married to. And they could care less about your eternal soul. They don't care if you live or die eternally. They just want you for their pleasure. 
You are pornography for the other person that you are not married to. Pornia, translated, fornication, pornia, pornography. The demons are being entertained by it because you're giving worship to the demons. You are worshiping Satan by your sins, not only watching pornography, but also sharing your body with another person. Just the demons are watching you and the angels of God are watching you, okay? So, God gave them the penalty that they deserved. Since they thought it was foolish to acknowledge God, He abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They're backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. Listen, we are haters of God when we look at pornography. And I'm going to be done here in about three minutes. I pray right now that you will see Satan's agenda against your life just like he had with me. Satan wants to kill you, and he's going to if you don't repent. He's going to. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, he's going to also reap. If you sow into the flesh, you're going to reap destruction. But if you sow into the spirit, you're going to reap everlasting life. You've got to ask God to show you things as he sees it. When you see it through his eyes, you're going to be so broken. You're going to be broken. Broken. And that's the issue. You're not broken before God. He loves you. That I was able to open my life up to you humbly. Say, you know what? God delivered me. And he can deliver you too. He can take you from the gutter to the uttermost. He can deliver you from pornography. He can deliver you from immorality. He can deliver you. He can heal your thoughts. God said that he heals our thoughts and our memories. He even heals our memories. He talks about it in the book of Isaiah. He heals our memories. I don't have memories of my past, but I have that memory of what I saw on Footloose last night with that naked man with his butt, it, it, it imprinted an image in my mind that will eventually go away in time. But listen, I couldn't believe it. It came right into my house. You can't let these things come into your house. They will imprint images into your mind and it'll, it will defile you. It will defile, defile, make you unholy and ungodly. And you won't be able to have real relationships with anyone, including your husband or wife. You're going to bring all that in. But it's never too late to repent. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. I love you. I want to see you live. I don't want Satan to take an advantage of you. Because we are not ignorant of his devices. Listen. You can't be continuing to look at porn and be saved. you got to get saved for real. Let's get saved for real. It's never too late. Get saved for real. Get saved where you get a real transformation, like from darkness to light, <laughs> right? No more. You won't even desire it. You really won't. You don't desire evil things when you have the nature of God inside of you. He said, I'll take out your stony heart and give you a heart of flesh, that you'll obey me and keep my commandments. He does a supernatural work in our lives that we change from the gutter the gutter, the down, there's nothing so deep. Listen, I don't care how evil your pornography is. I don't care what you've done. There's nothing that God won't forgive you for. Nothing. His blood removes all sin. His blood, that blood that, that was shed at the cross on Calvary 2,000 years ago. All that condemnation you're under, that blood will remove everything that you've done. But you got to repent. you got to repent. Without repentance, there's no, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. you got to receive the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. you got to receive his blood to wash you. And Lord, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, I bind every lying spirit right now that will lie to you, telling you that you're okay with God. And that God understands. I bind those lying spirits right now. Bind every spirit of witchcraft right now that has lied to you and deceived you. 
making you believe that you're going to heaven when you're in habitual, unrepented sin, which is iniquity. That day you will hear, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. I bind every lying spirit in your life. And I ask, Lord, that you would loose forth your spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, that would convict every person under the sound of my voice and that you would bring major transformation and that your love brings all men to repentance. Your love that while we we're yet sinners that you died for us when we don't deserve nothing that you gave us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the glorious gift that you've given us. And that we can come to you. And you said, if any man comes unto me in no wise will I cast him out. Thank you, Father, for your power, your mercy, your goodness, and your kindness towards us when we don't deserve it. Thank you, Jesus. And please set that captive free. You came to open the prison doors to set the captives free. To open the eyes of the blind and the ears of the deaf. To heal the brokenhearted. May the Lord touch your broken heart and whatever opening there is in the abuse that you've been through in your childhood and the ne neglect and sexual abuse that you've been through and verbal abuse, may God touch your life in Jesus' mighty name. And may the anointing under the sound of my voice break the bondage and give you hope that yesterday is forgotten. Old things are passed away. Behold, I make all things new. Behold, behold, I make all things new. God bless you. If he can do it for me, he will surely do it for you. He is not a respecter of persons. I love you and I'll talk to you guys soon. Please share this video. So many people need to hear this. God bless you.